Hello everyone, welcome to Meow's Cafe. I am the storyteller for today, but please forgive me, I prefer to remain anonymous. I once endured torment from my family to the point where life felt unbearable, but now I have broken free from my original family. I can be considered a case of overcoming adversity, and I am sharing my experiences in the hope of offering hope to those still trapped in the quagmire. I was born in 1996 in a small city in the southwest of China. My parents divorced when I was five years old, and due to my mother's inability to support me, I was entrusted to my father. And my father quickly remarried. When I was in the first grade of primary school, I gained a stepmother, and life took a turn for the worse, akin to a life worse than that of pigs and dogs. If there's a stepmother, there's bound to be a stepfather, and I often endured physical and verbal abuse, not to mention the lack of financial support. Just to give you an example for everyone to get a sense, when I was in the first year of junior high school, my stepmother asked me to deliver fruits and money to a distant relative hospitalized. I inquired about the hospital building and floor, trying to figure out where exactly in the hospital they were. However, she perceived it as me questioning her authority, interpreting it as a disrespectful behavior towards elders. In reality, the urgency of the situation and the long distance from my school to home made me sound a bit abrupt, as I had to catch a bus. As a result, my stepmother grabbed my hair and gave me a few slaps. After school, I immediately went to the hospital. It was around 4.40 pm when we were let out, and by the time I arrived at the hospital, it was already getting dark. I only had 25 cents on me, and since I needed to take two buses to get to the hospital, I decided to walk, planning to take the bus back. I wandered through the hospital, searching for the right ward. Some wards didn't allow visitors, and when I asked about a specific person, nobody paid any attention to me. As I watched the sky turn completely dark, a sense of despair overwhelmed me, and I ended up sitting in the corridor, crying. A nurse with glasses walked by and asked me what was wrong. After explaining my situation, she was incredibly kind. She went to inquire from several people and finally informed me about the floor and bed number. I delivered the items to the distant relative, and they asked if I had eaten. I replied that I hadn't. They gave me $4 for a meal and urged me to hurry home. After leaving the hospital, I bought a 50 cents hamburger at the entrance and took the bus back. I got home around 8 pm. Upon returning home, my stepmother asked me where I had been. I explained that I couldn't find the place, so it took me a while. Immediately, she began to berate me, claiming that she had clearly explained and even provided money for a taxi. She falsely accused me of definitely going out to fool around. My father, upon hearing this, started scolding me. Unable to bear the injustice, I began to defend myself. My father grabbed a drying rack and started hitting me, continuing to physically and verbally abuse me until 9 pm. My stepmother joined in, noticing the money in my bag. She accused me of stealing the money she had given for the relative earlier in the day, leading to another round of physical abuse. Even more horrifying was her suggestion to my father to impose a different punishment on me, insisting that I needed a lesson to remember. Following her advice, she brought a bucket of water and forcefully submerged my head. I vividly remember struggling desperately, feeling like I was on the verge of drowning. Eventually, I must have passed out, only to wake up later lying on the sofa. My family environment had a profoundly negative impact on me, leaving me with deep-seated feelings of inferiority. I became like a startled bird, trembling at the slightest disturbance. During high school, my stepmother, driven by a desire to prevent me from outperforming her sister's child, withheld financial support from my father. She insisted that she would provide for me, but, in reality, she never did. Left with no choice, I would ask my father for money when she wasn't around, claiming it was for study materials. On occasions when he was in a good mood, he would give me a few hundred. During the college entrance exam, I didn't perform well, ending up in an ordinary university with preferential policies for students from certain regions. In those days, desperate to escape from home, I devoted myself to studying. Every morning, I would buy three pieces of bread and two eggs at school for around 90 cents. On exam days, I would buy two eggs. Due to owing class fees, I faced a lot of disdainful glances. I had no good clothes, always looked unkempt, 
washed my hair only once a week, and had no friends. I felt that most of the classmates found me repulsive. The only warmth I experienced was when a guy in front of me once ordered a lot from McDonald's. He gave me a hamburger and said I would look better if I gained some weight. After entering university, my stepmother grew even more disdainful of me. She and my dad had their own child, a boy, when I was in first grade. My dad increasingly saw me as a burden. In my freshman year, he only covered my tuition without providing a single penny for living expenses. I had to work in a garment factory during that summer, enduring 10-hour shifts every day. Fortunately, after three months, I managed to save over a thousand dollars, enough to sustain me for one semester. In university, I was always solitary, with a very low presence. I found a part-time job at the school's courier station, where I would pick up parcels. Being thin, with messy hair and a pale complexion, they were initially reluctant to hire me. However, the boss's wife took pity on me and gave me a trial opportunity. From Monday to Thursday, I started organizing deliveries and making reminder calls from 6.30 p.m. On Fridays to Sundays, I worked from 6.30 a.m. to around 11 p.m. I earned $250 per month, and during festive months, the boss would give me an additional $30. During winter and summer vacations, I worked in a factory. From my sophomore year onward, I never asked my family for a penny. I managed to be self-sufficient, even saving some money. Throughout my four years of college, my father only called me twice. Once was to remind me to give my brother red envelopes for the Chinese New Year, and the other was to scold me for blocking my stepmother. Honestly, before turning 20, I yearned for my family's care and tried to please them. However, on the eve of my 20th birthday, during the winter break of my sophomore year, I went home for two days during the Chinese New Year. At the dinner table on New Year's Eve, my father asked me to give my brother a red envelope. I handed over the prepared red envelope with 400 yuan, which is approximately equivalent to 66 US dollars. After he opened it, my father stood up and slapped me, saying that giving such an inauspicious number was cursing my brother to death because the number 4 sounds like death in our language. My stepmother immediately started scolding me, calling me a heartless monster and extremely malicious. I genuinely didn't know that the number 400 was considered unlucky for such reasons. I remember receiving a red envelope with 400 yuan during high school, and no one ever told me that the number 400 was associated with a curse. My brother, indifferent to my situation, looked at me coldly and commented that I was stingy, only giving 400. My father, even more furious, kicked me and told me to leave, saying that seeing me on such an important day brought bad luck. At that moment, I strongly considered ending my life. However, the thought that my demise would only bring joy to them held me back. I felt a deep sense of injustice and made a solemn vow that I would no longer consider them my family. I was determined to seek revenge. Early the next morning, I packed my belongings and went to work. Four days later, I celebrated my 20th birthday in the factory dormitory. That night, lying on the uncomfortable dormitory bed, I reflected on many things. I felt a profound sense of misery and an undeniable belief that they were unworthy of being called my parents. From my sophomore year onward, I never returned home. During the Chinese New Year, I worked, and I stopped sending money to my family. During the winter break of my junior year, my father asked if I would come home, explaining that he had broken his leg and needed someone to take care of him. I refused, stating that I needed to work since the holiday pay was double the usual rate. He inquired about how much money I had saved, and at that time, I had accumulated around $1,500. However, to provoke a reaction from him, I claimed to have nearly $10,000. Upon hearing this, he immediately offered $1,500 each to my parents and my younger brother. I'm not inherently kind-hearted, I have a strong sense of revenge. In response to his request, I said, I can give each of you three $10,000 hell banknotes. Hell banknotes are fake currency used for ancestral worship. As expected, he exploded in anger. I hung up the phone before he could start cursing, then promptly blocked and deleted him. After that, many relatives came to persuade me, saying things like, your dad raised you for so many years, you shouldn't be so heartless. I didn't listen. 
At that time, my heart had already hardened, and I only lived for myself. My dad probably realized that I had grown up and had some utility for them, so he tried various ways to show goodwill. I thought they regretted their actions and were willing to treat me well, so I reconnected with them. My younger brother is seven years younger than me. While I was in college, he was in junior high school. He wasn't cut out for academics, and due to our parents' indulgence, he consumed too many snacks, resulting in being short and chubby with a volatile temperament. One night, he called me, expressing his desire to buy a pair of sneakers, but our parents wouldn't provide the money. He asked me to pitch in, mentioning an amount of over $300. When I refused, he started verbally abusing me, even threatening physical violence. Angered, I responded with the harshest words, reducing him to tears. Subsequently, my stepmother called to berate me. Naturally, I retorted, asserting my financial independence and expressing that I had no requests or dependencies on them. I was no longer the helpless little girl who endured their abuse, I had grown up. Engaging in these actions has been extremely challenging for me. Since childhood, I've struggled with feelings of inferiority and have become accustomed to being suppressed. After each act of resistance against them, I sometimes feel uneasy and guilty, with a subconscious inclination to surrender. However, I consistently remind myself of how terribly they treated me in the past. During my high school years, I noticed that my younger brother has started experiencing sexual awakening, I also don't understand why he became so vulgar during the 5th and 6th grades of primary school. I consistently asked him in advance if he needed to use the bathroom while I was taking a shower, to which he replied negatively. However, despite this, he repeatedly knocked on the door while I was bathing. While I was taking a shower, he insisted on coming in to use the toilet. I told him I would be finished in three minutes and asked him to wait. However, my stepmother, without any warning, opened the door and let him in. I was completely unprepared and instinctively covered my sensitive areas with my hands. My stepmother forcefully pushed me away, saying, if you don't study hard, you'll end up like her. My brother looked at me, almost naked, chuckled disdainfully, and echoed his mom. Since then, I lock the door every time. After graduating from university, I successfully passed the civil service examination and became a civil servant in the provincial capital. Although the salary isn't high, I no longer have to sell my labor cheaply to support myself. During the internship period, my salary was only a little over $300, but my dad asked me to give him $500 every month. Talking about how they are getting old, it's burdensome to support my younger brother, and since I have a stable job now, I should help the family more. I replied that I am currently interning, need to pay rent, and support myself, so I don't have extra money. He started yelling, saying I am worthless and unfilial, suggesting that they should have thrown me into the dung pit when I was born. At that moment, I erupted. The accumulated resentment over the years made me lose control. I yelled back at him in the street, expressing my feelings. I asked. After all these years, don't you have any guilt for how you treated me? I felt like a dog at home, subjected to your arbitrary beatings and verbal abuse. In elementary school, you made me take care of my little brother. When I tried to stop him from eating trash, he cried, and without distinguishing right from wrong, you violently attacked me, kicked my face, and threw bowls at me. In high school, I ate bread every day. One time, I forgot to boil water, and you threatened to cut my hand. Now that I'm working, you want to drain my blood. You want me to give you money, right? Sure, go ahead, take me to court. Whatever the court decides, I'll pay. He fell silent after hearing that, knowing he was in the wrong. He then started saying that he and my stepmother have bad tempers, but are doing it all for my own good, and I just scoffed. What does it mean to be for my own good? My stepmother threw a bar of soap into the toilet and forced me to pick it out, she had just urinated in the toilet without flushing, and I planned to use a bag on my hand to retrieve the soap. She didn't allow it, pulled my hair, and pushed my head into the toilet. In the end, I scooped out the soap with my hand, feeling too disgusted to eat. Is it for my own good to live a life without dignity, like a slave? I now almost ignore my parents, sending them $66 each month, which is 400 yuan. They no longer complain about the unlucky number but only about the amount being too little. 
At 25, I remained single for life. In my senior year, as my financial situation improved, I started taking better care of myself. Now, I don't look as unattractive as before. In recent years, there have been guys expressing interest in me, but I've lost the ability to love, so I reject all of them. Alas, during my junior high school days, I faced bullying due to being perceived as dirty and unattractive. Male students gave me nicknames like the zombie and would spit at me. Every time they came near me, they would act as if they were about to get infected, and so on. At that time, I indeed wasn't very clean and used to cry often, presenting a rather disheartened appearance. However, these experiences have left a profound impact on me. Given my family background and personality, I feel that I would only become a burden to a significant other. I don't want the person I like or someone who genuinely cares about me to endure these hardships. I've developed a tendency towards conspiracy theories, perhaps because I lacked friends and experienced bullying since childhood. I'm overly sensitive to acts of kindness from others, reluctant to trouble them, always wondering why they would be willing to help someone like me. I always have the urge to escape, fear physical contact, struggle to form intimate relationships with others, and many times, when I see tall buildings, I contemplate jumping down. I really like cats and have a strong desire to have one. However, without my own house, I fear I won't be able to provide a good life for it. I dream of buying a small 70 square meter house instead of renting, but the housing prices here are $5,000 per square meter, which I cannot afford. Therefore, I have been holding back from getting a cat. If I ever have my own house, I will definitely have a cat and treat it incredibly well. In recent times, my dad keeps urging relatives to pressure me into getting married, starting to talk about dowry matters. He also mentioned that they want to buy a house for my brother, as there isn't much money left. He didn't pass the high school entrance exam and had to pay to enroll. They spent a lot of money for the sake of him. I completely ignore them. I've finally gained control of my own life. Every time I have any contact with them, it reminds me of the miserable days I endured before. I often have nightmares of being beaten and humiliated. I will never be able to forgive my parents for what they did to me in my childhood and youth. If you, the one reading this, are in a similar situation as I once was, please don't give up on your life. There were many times I wanted to end it all, but hatred and unwillingness kept me going until now. People always grow up. Once you have a job and financial independence, they become like roadside trash, no longer able to influence you, 